Hello, it's Crafty Carol here again from Northern Ireland with another project for my Christmas countdown this year. And this is a project that actually my upline showed me how to make and it's just gorgeous. And this is a star, you can see it's a three-dimensional star um, and it shows both sides of a DSP. Uh, this was the one we actually made at my uplines. And I've stuck some ribbon on because I'm going to use them um, to hang, but you hang on the tree, but you could use them as a topping for a present or whatever, really. They're just, just, and they're so simple to make. A little bit fiddly and you need to sort of sit and hold things for quite a bit, but I'll show you uh, on the video how we make them. And they are made, unbelievably, just from one sheet of 6x6 DSP. So you can get a lot out. So this was the one we made um, in, in my class with my upline and uh, this one, the wonderful Gillian Duff, not to mention her name. Um, and uh, this one is one I made as soon as I got home because I was so excited by them. And this one uses one of the shiny, because it's a shiny paper, um, it's a shiny DSP. Um, and I just found I had to hold them for longer to make it stick down. Um, and on the centre bit, I actually used some tape as well, but I'll explain that as I go along. So you want to take one sheet of DSP and cut it into strips. So here I've used um, a sheet of um, an old retired paper from last year, which I really like. And when you're choosing your sheet, you want to make sure that the one side is, is a good contrast to the first side. So you can see here, these two greens are going to match quite nicely. So I'm going to split them into two lots of six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And that means I should have six left here. I'll just check that I haven't got two stuck together because that's easy enough to do. So I just used my trimmer to cut these. It doesn't matter if they're not totally exact. You can see those two, that one's just slightly thinner. Um, but just try and get them as exact as you can to half an inch wide. So two lots of six. And we're going to work with one lot of six first. So the first thing to do is take two of the pieces and it really doesn't matter which two and you're just going to fold them in half so that you've got a mark where the centre is in two of the pieces because that's how we're going to start everything off. So just fold those two in half. So I've now got them in half. I'm going to open them up again. And this is where it can get a little bit messy. Just keep wash washing your hands between goes if you need. Um, but I'm just going to stick these together in a cross. So I'm putting a little blob of glue where the fold is and then the other fold I'm going to put right in the middle so that I've got a, an exact cross. And I can use the lines on my um, mat here to make sure it's straight. And I'm just going to hold it down for a second to make sure it's nice and well stuck. So that is the first, first piece, okay? Just forming a cross like that. We're then going to weave some pieces in. So I'm going to start with these two. So you can see this piece is going across. So this piece is above that piece. So the next one we need to have is lying again on top. So I'm like weaving. So this one goes on top, that, that on top of this one, because that one is on top of that one. Does that make, hopefully that makes some sense. So again, I'm just going to put a little blob of glue, just a tiny bit, you don't need much for this. Found you needed a bit more for shiny paper, but, um, for matte paper, which this is, it's got some gold in it, as you can see, which is rather nice, but it is basically a matte paper. So we're just going to stick that one on there and then the other one at the other side. So we're going to have three at the centre here and placement. You just want to leave a little little tiny gap between them, not, not anything much at all and make sure they're nice and lined up. So that doesn't look too bad. So that's the stage, first stage, so the cross, and then you add two above. Then we're going to turn it through 90 degrees and we're going to weave the next two. So that's on top, underneath, on top for those strips. So this needs to be the opposite. So for these strips, we need to go above the outside two and under the middle one. Can you see how that produces the weave effect? Let me bring it closer. And then you can see that that produces the weave effect. Do you see? And the other one similarly will go in the same way the other side like this. Yeah. 
You see what I mean by the weave? So you make it like a basket weave like that. Right, so we're going to stick those in. I'm going to lift that centre one up so I've, I know that I need to go underneath that. And we'll put this one in first. So again, just a tiny, tiny gap. Lay that down, make sure it's straight. And then I can put a tiny bit of glue there and press that down. So that's got that one in that side. And we're going to do the same this side. So a little blob of glue, top and bottom. And then lay this on top. Make sure it's level, the top and the bottom of the total. So it's level with the other two pieces. Press that down. And then finally, a little blob in there. So that's the preparation for it. And we're going to do that on the other piece as well. So I will go through this again, just very quickly. You're going to fold two pieces in half. It doesn't matter which pieces to form the initial. So you find the center for the initial cross piece. So we're going to lay those down and stick them together. So that's my center for my center blob. And then that one, that's the center there, goes on top. And I can, as I said, I can use the lines on my desk to make sure that it's nice and straight. Stage one, stage two is sticking two pieces one either side. And stage three, we turn it through 90 degrees and then we're just going to slide it under the middle one. So we're going to have a blob either side on top and it's going to go under the middle there. Make sure they're stuck down and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So we've now got two pieces that look like that. So this first one has had a chance to make, I've made sure the glue is really nice and set so those pieces are well stuck together. And now in each corner, we're going to make the star, sort of the bits that stick out on the star. So I'm going to show, try and show you very carefully. You want to just start to, just encourage these to bend before we start. Because we're going to take one piece, bend it round so that the back is facing and then stick it together like that. Okay, so we're taking both of them, turning them so that the back color is facing, sticking them together there. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on. This is, this is the bit that takes the time because you have to wait until these are properly stuck before you move on to the next corner. So you just want to hold it between your fingers just for a second or two until it's really, really stuck down well. Then we're going to repeat that with the next four corners. So that is stuck there. I'm going to repeat it with the next four corners. So encouraging the paper just to turn slightly. It's just helpful to just run your fingers, fingernails along just to start to get that bend because then it'll make it easier and put less pressure on the paper for it to then stick. So making sure that it's the back side of each of these turn and stick down. And again, just hold it for a while. So I will um, speed the video up through the next ones because you don't want to see me just repeating that. Um, do watch this again if you to, to make sure you understand how these are turning and then sticking together. But I'll just do the next two and finish this one. Then you repeat exactly the same with the second piece. So encouraging it to turn. A little bit of glue. Encouraging the other one to turn and sticking together. So you can see I'm sticking, sticking them across so the edges are parallel. So the corner of that goes to the top and then fits each edge. So it's just crossing over nicely like that. So it forms the point, yeah? Hopefully you can see that. So there is my first side completed. So I've got a cross left, top and bottom, and I've got my corner pieces glued together. So I'm gonna repeat that with this second piece.
There, so now I've got my two pieces finished and you can see that um, I've got four sort of, I don't know what, four points and then the cross across the centre. So now to put it together, we're going to hold the back of each piece towards each other and put them so that they're offset. Does that make sense? So you've got the cross, the cross is going across. So let me show you again, just <laughs> I'm not sure that made, made total sense. So if we turn them over, we're going to bring them together. So these are pointing out diagonally. So we want these ones to be up and down. Yep. So that's how you, oops, that's how you place them together. And then to finish off, you just, for each one, you're going to slide the cross piece through the appropriate point. So four on that side, and then I'm going to turn it round and do the same thing for the other side. So all eight pieces are going through their respective points, or later the cross pieces. Okay, does that make sense? You end up with something that looks a bit like that. So you've got the gap in the middle, hold it that way, and then these points coming out. So now the final stage, or next to final stage, we're going to decorate it after that, is we're going to stick each of these down. So I'm going to just put, again, a little bit of glue in the point and then hold that down. And this is where we can make sure it's nice and straight. So you want to hold it down. There'll be a bit sticking out. Don't worry about that. Just hold it down, hold it in place until it's stuck. So I'll start with that one. And we'll move around and do all the other ones. <laughs> so again, I'm going to race through the video because it's pretty boring watching people gluing and holding things. So that's that one stuck down. I'll go through the rest and I'll be back very soon. So while I'm just holding this last one, I just want to show you the back. So you want to make sure that the point is roughly the same distance from the top of the strip and that it's in the centre of the strip. And that holds this then perfectly evenly. It's easy enough just to, to let those slip a little bit. So now those have all stuck down, it just remains to trim them. So for each of these points, we're going to use the backs you can see. I'm just going to trim along the line so I've retained my point. So I'm going to cut off the excess piece like that. Yeah, of the cross piece. So the piece that I've pushed through, I'm just trimming it off so that it's level with the point. And again, I'm going to do that with all of these. So there is the completed decoration with all of the stars together. See how simple that is? It looks so complicated, but actually it's really simple. So it just remains to decorate it. And for the ones we've done so far, I've just used a foil scalloped circle. These are no old dies actually retired, but a scalloped circle and then the slightly smaller stitch circle. And then I've embossed a greeting on it. Uh, that's from the Joy of Christmas set. So this one, I've actually used it from the wreath set. They, they make it merry. So I've embossed that on gold on the piece of, it's actually soft succulent because this is a retired paper with soft succulent. So I've used some old retired card. I've cut a glimmer scalloped circle. I'm going to stick those together and I might use some tear and tape. Oh no, some, might use some fast fuse actually just to make sure it sticks quickly so that I can and I'm going to put a fair bit on because sticking on glitter paper is never that easy. So I've got to get this properly lined up now. 
because it's only just showing around the edge as you can see but just enough to make it interesting and I thought that matched the gold dots on the uh, on the star itself and then I'm just going to stick it in the centre just using one dimensional and I found the easiest way to do this oh, don't need the dog hair in that <laughs> Gus is spreading hair around again so I'll take the backing off and then just stick it on. Be careful, don't just press down. So I'm going to stick a finger into the star to hold it. And yes, we'll have that upwards, I think. No, we'll have one of these upwards. And the reason will be clear in a minute. So I'm just going to use my fingers inside the star to squeeze that dimensional, stick it on one side. It doesn't matter which side you stick it on. You could put one on both sides if you wanted. Um, and then I can stick a piece of ribbon on if I want to hang it, or as I say, it can be used just as a present topper or whatever. But I'm going to stick some ribbon on, and I've just chosen some of this nice um, silver edged ribbon. And I'm going to stick it using some tear and tape. I'm going to stick it to itself, just at the, the bottom sort of inch bit, about there. Now, this is a fiddly bit, it's actually getting the Tear and tape cover off without actually lifting all of the glue because it is ribbon it doesn't always stick brilliantly there we have it so then fold it over stick it together And then you can choose where to actually stick it. So on this one, because I was using a, a ribbon that really matched that, I could stick it inside. For this one, I've actually used the same ribbon. I've stuck it on what to me is the outside and the back. So I'm going to do the same here. Again, just using some tear and tape on there to hold the ribbon down. But you don't have to put the ribbon on. You could leave it without, it would be absolutely fine. There we go. I'll stick the ribbon on the back there. And there I have my next one. And I've got three to hang on my tree. <laughs> so I hope you do have a go at this. It's such an easy decoration, such a nice way to use up our DSP. As I said, the only thing to check is that the two sides of the DSP look okay when put together. Some of them I tried, I had a look at some of my DSP and at the back was so different from the front, it didn't look right or whatever. You want it to be coordinating without uh, a, but enough of a difference to, to make it obvious like in these three. Now, I just wanted to mention again this one. This I've done with this specialty paper, so it's a shiny paper. I found I could still use Tombow, but I had to hold it for longer. And when I made the initial crisscross of the six pieces, three each way, I actually used a little bit of tear and tape uh, rather than Tombow to make sure it held in these center pieces. So that is, is really well held now because that's got as you can see, because that's got uh, tape rather than Tombow. So that was the only difference with that shiny paper. You can make it with any sort of paper, but I hope you have a go because it's such fun and they make such nice decorations. If you want the full instructions, they are in my blog at craftycarolscards.co.uk. Um, please sign up for my emails and please subscribe to this YouTube channel and I will see you again soon. Thank you for joining me. Bye for now.